Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. And we're at home today and I'm going to talk about planting seeds. Now, <laughs> many videos in the past I've said I'll never show you how I plant seeds because there's so many people who do it better than me. But so many people say to me that, oh, you're so organised. I don't know how you do it. How do you plant so many seeds and all that sort of thing. Um, and lots of people say, well, you have such amazing germination. You must have, you know, you just do it some special way. And I don't, but I'll show you the full system. I plant a lot of seeds and I don't really like doing it. So I've got it a nice little slick system for you. And uh, yeah, let's get on, plant some seeds. Okay, so on my computer and my phone and my tablet, um, I've got access to this uh, Airtable database that I've built and what I'm looking at at the moment is the varieties part of the database and so I've actually just filtered this to just show me that anything that has got a sowing date of February on it and I'll have been browsing this in the morning in the cafe to see which things I'm going to sow and I'll be researching them and stuff like that anyway I'll tag some specific ones of those uh, that I want to get sown and so if I look at just my tag list here I've, I'm going to sew Roxy, French breakfast, Napier and lipstick today and so if I look at my sewing log then I've also got those same things tagged and because these two databases are joined together uh, I don't need to tag them multiple times um, and what I've got here then is the sewing log so the sewing log is slightly different because it shows me the actual seed packets that I'm going to sew and I keep a log and that logs quite useful for me because it allows me to keep track of everything to do with this batch that I'm sewing so for example here I'm going to give this batch an ID of 66 and as soon as I've sewed it I'll just uncheck this tag uh, that means I don't have to think about it anymore um, yeah so I've got a link here so I can click here and I can go back to my master varieties database it's got loads of information all about uh, French breakfast radish um, but key information is that I need to sew 20 stations and I'm going to sew four per station. That's a total of 80 seeds that I need. That's the packet that I'm going to use. I'm going to sew them today, 24th of February. Uh, so the month is February. And when they germinate, I'll almost always on my phone, I'll just click into this record and say today, and that will be the germination date. And then when I come to plant them out, I just say how many stations are planted out. So of those 20 that are planted, how many survived? Pick where I've actually planted them. So for example, did I plant them on Jenny's plot, in the coal frame on my plot, in the polytunnel on Debbie's plot, somewhere in the garden, etc. Um, the planting date, then the first harvest date, and then the last harvest date. And then automatically from those dates, uh, and obviously this, well, these are all error at the moment, but it'll tell me the days it took for that batch to germinate, the number of days that they were in plugs, the number of days that they were in the bed, day, number of days to the first harvest, so that's calculated from the day when I sowed the seed, and the number of days of harvest. Right? So this is pretty useful for me. It's not Some of it's not that relevant to radish, but generally speaking, it's pretty useful because it tells me uh, for different times of the year, how long it takes to first harvest and then how long the things occupy the bed and yeah so I'm trying to get all of this as a nice simple system so that in subsequent years I don't have to do any thinking about it or any of this because it's all sorted so I think that's pretty much it for the computer system there's loads more stuff here and I have an old video showing all about this database uh, and how I designed it and how I use it and I will be updating that soon because it's fantastic and I'm really loving capturing loads of really useful information about everything that I'm doing and uh, yeah I'm really enjoying myself 
Uh, but the old um, video, which I'll put in the description to this, is pretty useful in its own right. Um, but a new one's come in that's much more comprehensive, that goes into this, and the uh, design that I'm using now, which is vastly improved from the uh, one that I shared a couple of months ago. Okay, so back to the real world. Okay then, so in the real world, I've got a very simple system for storing the seeds. Basically, I put unused seed packets, the ones that I haven't planted yet this year, uh, just stored by the season in uh, folders, and then I get them out when I want to sow them. So there they are. And then I'll write my labels. I always write the labels before I do that. And all my labels now are just cut from milk cartons. And you can base, hopefully you can see, I just put the variety name because I pretty much remember now what the uh, varieties, what type of uh, veg the, or fruit or veg the variety is. And I put that ID number, so it's ID number 66. And that lets me keep track of the batch. So I just have all of those and they've all got this unique ID number. And the database just generates that ID number, so it's always unique. And so I can very easily on my phone, wherever I am, just open that up and see what batch 46 is, when I planted it, where I planted it, the seed packet that I planted it from. And if that crop fails, then I'll just give it, uh, I can just tap on the uh, phone screen and mark it as failed, for example or if it does spectacularly well or, spe or quite badly then I've got a rating system that I use so I rate every batch in terms of its success out of 10 and that's fantastically useful next year because I can when I'm doing my planning for next year I can look at the things that did well that I planted in January I can look at the things that did well that I planted in February and I've got some notes as to why they didn't do well, for example, or why they I think they did do well. And so when you're kind of pushing the envelope like me, it's really useful to build up this knowledge. Okay, so we're in my workshop and I have this little spot on the bench here and this is my sewing area. And actually, I love this. <laughs> it only cost a couple of quid. quid. It has made a huge amount of difference. So first things first, I put this down on the floor and I fill it with compost. And the compost that I use is Leamington's, you can see that in there, I'm going to fall over to get in there anyway. I'll uh, put a link in the description, it's Leamington's seed and potting compost or something like that. So I load that up with compost and as I'm um, taking handfuls out I just break it up so that any kind of lumps like that are just roughly broken up a little bit. I don't bother sieving it or anything like that and I shake it to the back of the tray and I mix in any old little bits and pieces of compost that were left um, from last time into that but I try not to leave very much compost uh, in here because it dries out. So I'm nearly ready for sewing. An extremely simple system for sewing. So I basically use these trays when they need to go in a propagator. So that means something that needs 80 degrees. And there's very few things that need 80 degrees. The things are, that do are all in my varieties database. They're flagged as needing that temperature. So those go in there and the propagator has little lids like this. It's a cheapest and simplest propagator that you can buy. If I'm sewing something that's going to get pricked out, and I don't do that for a lot of things, but I do do it uh, occasionally. And I'll normally sew into stations in here, maybe 10, 15 seeds or something like that per station. And I'll prick them out later. If I'm sowing peas, beans, uh, multi-sowing, radish, uh, that's pretty much it. Well, anyway, I'll sow into these trays and again my master database tells me 
uh, which seed tray I'm going to use but uh, yeah there's only a handful of things that I use this size for the vast majority of things I use this tray for and I just reuse them hundreds of times uh, I don't well not hundreds of times tens of times hopefully I don't wash them anything like that I do shake them out and I do just check them for slugs but I almost never find any slugs and uh, so next step I don't have that tray on there because I don't want to get compost in the base so I start off just like this and I fill it and I won't insult you by showing myself filling okay. a tray so at this point I've just filled it by hand I do everything by hand and I just make sure that everything's full to the brim that one wasn't and so they're not compacted at all now in order to compact them I lift up the tray and drop it and I don't have a tripod with me so I can't show you that but I'll show you the results I lift it up about six inches and just drop it on to here okay so there you can see it's dropped and some of the cells have sunk a lot so that one's sunk at least a centimeter and that one for example hasn't sunk hardly at all and that's kind of just the useful thing about dropping it you just compress it a little bit it's not a huge amount uh, but you do find the cells that uh, haven't been filled with as much compost and then I just got another handful of uh, compost and like that and I'll just smooth it in and I'll shake the compost to the back again I keep doing that because I like to keep everything clean and then I'll put the tray in its outer I don't use trays with holes in them so obviously the this inner liner has holes in it um, the liner that it goes into I don't use the ones with holes in at home because I've got everything will end up on a windowsill and wife's not well I'm not <laughs> too pleased um, if I water it and water goes all over the windowsill so when they go to the allotment sometimes uh, in the summer when I'm watering a lot and I don't want to over water I'll swap over to trays that uh, have got holes in the base and now I'm going to plant Roxy which is a lettuce and this is the way that I pretty much always sow my seeds I just stick my finger in about nail depth and I do that for almost everything apart from the obvious things like peas and beans and I'm never too bothered about how deep I go because it doesn't seem to make much difference you do get breakthrough at slightly different times like one might be four days and another one might be six days but it makes no difference at all the benefit is that when you see the first one breaking through that's time to move it to a sunnier windowsill rather than uh, the windowsill where I actually do most of my seed starting so it's actually really useful to have one or two breaking through early because if you do um, delay moving them to the windowsill because you're just you know you're too busy or whatever only a couple of them get leggy by the time the rest of them are through um, they're on a sunny windowsill so nothing gets okay. leggy so I just empty the seeds into my hand I don't use anything fancy I just use my fingers to do all the planting how many seeds do I plant well the number that I put in each station is in my master database so I don't have to think about it uh, I don't use necessarily the traditional amounts that are on the seed packet um, I figured it out for myself what the optimums are over the last three years in the case of lettuce it germinates really well so I want to put one seed per station and again because they're going to germinate really well I'd sow them direct like this rather than sow them and then prick them out but because a few will fail I don't worry if I sow two seeds in a station so when I'm 
doing it by hand. Inevitably, I will occasionally drop two seeds in. I actually want to make sure that occasionally I do. I end up probably with about five that I've got two seeds in. If anything fails to germinate, I shall prick out those five and use them to fill in any gaps. So that's how Seems I say. So took about 20, 30 seconds. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Now any seed packet that I've sown, I just pop in this container here. And so I know that anything, any successions that I need to do are basically in here. So I'll find them when I need them. And I just find that's the simplest thing. Just makes me keep track. And occasionally I'll just go through here and if there's anything that I'm not going to sow for the rest of the year, it's in here. If anything fails and I need to sow another batch, again, it's in here. It's really easy to find. My little shed um, that I'm in has got an east facing window, so it hardly gets any sun. It's nice and cool all year round, pretty much. And um, seeds just fine, just there. No problem at all. Never had a problem with germination. Um, I know some people like to keep them in fridges and things like that, but I don't bother with that. So covering up the seeds basically goes like that. Just put a little bit. I do just work it through my fingers just to make sure there's any, no big lumps. Just Okay, so that's finished. Okay, so watering. So these are the water bottles that I use. These are just reused, uh, I don't know what they are, water bottles probably. And just buy these off Amazon, a little tiny water roses. And I find these are absolutely fantastic. I'll show you how much water I use. Okay, so no science to this really. I'm just using the water just to compress the um, compost and make sure that it has good contact with the seed. And this is already getting pretty boring. So I'll put a, a bit more on than that though. I think a lot of people will think I overwater perhaps but this is the amount of water I always use. And I'll go just one more time. And of course it all depends on how moist your compost is to start off with. Mine was not particularly moist. And having put that much water on, the compost won't be saturated all the way through. I don't saturate the compost all the way through until the seeds are starting to grow quite well. The roots will be sort of, you know, a couple of centimetres down. Then I'll bottom water. Um, and I'll bottom water maybe once a week just to make sure that the bottom of the compost is nice and moist. But the vast majority of the time I am just watering the top. So I realised that uh, I was using the wrong size tray for radish. Um, in my uh, enthusiasm to show you the different tray sizes. This is the size tray that I use for radish and I only want uh, 20 stations so I'm going to sew some stir on in the other one and this is the kind of fluid way that my sewing normally goes but this gives me an opportunity to show you what I would then do just to update my database so I'll do that now. So unfortunately the audio didn't record for this but basically I'm just opening up the Airtable app and adding a new entry, searching for Sturon in my master database, and then just filling in all of the appropriate details, planting dates, number planted, the fact that I've actually done the sewing so I can keep track of what I've done, what I haven't done. And yeah, just working my way through and adding the photo and then we're all done. Okay, so we're back to sewing, and again, I just use my fingers. Okay, so that's all those sewn, took about two minutes. Now, hopefully you can see that these are all roughly the right number. So in that case, I'm aiming for four, but some will have five and some will have three, I don't really care. 
in fact I intentionally want that which I'll explain in a minute and in this case I'll probably go for about 8 some will have 10 some will have 6 and of course not all of them will germinate in every cell as well now I think it's good to not be accurate especially in the case of things like radish and spring onions and the reason is you want some to grow fast and some to grow slow so the ones that have only got say three radishes in they will probably be um, planted in the center of the bed and then they'll come ready first and the ones that have got lots in will be planted at the front of the bed or the side where there's a bit less shade with a bit more shade rather and they'll come out last same with the spring onions so the ones you want you don't want 80 spring onions on the same day or I don't uh, I want those spread over a week and so I will again intentionally uh, have different slightly different numbers just at random you know I don't plan it I uh, just roll them in with my f between my fingers pinch and roughly get about the right amount uh, but again as I say some of those spring onions will come early and some of them will come late um, and that's exactly what I want okay so I'm watering again and actually I've changed the uh, bottle that I'm using for the watering because this one just has a nicer slightly gentler spray now salad onions will germinate at quite low temperatures uh, so they don't actually need a warm uh, windowsill but uh, at this time of year the uh, windowsills in our house probably average about 65 degrees or something like that which is fine for, for uh, radishes and it's fine for onions um, you know they'll probably it'll get up to probably 75 if the sun comes out um, but that same windowsill in summer is too warm uh, it's okay for radish but it wouldn't be okay for uh, salad onions so I would put them on a shady windowsill instead okay so that's the peppers done I could have got a lot more in there but I don't want to sow too many peppers because I just haven't got enough frost free space to uh, house them all so I'm going to leave most of them until uh, mid-March and yeah we'll just put a little sprinkling of compost over the top of these and I shall water them in I never use vermiculite or anything like that I'm quite happy with compost okay so I'll tidy that up so those watered in and I'll just point out that I do use uh, room temperature um, water and if it's really cold then I might even pre-warm the uh, compost that I'm sewing into but it's very rare that I do that. So this is their resting place for the next couple of weeks uh, probably more like a week actually given what's in here um, yeah they just sit on that windowsill there's a radiator here make sure you push them as far back as possible just so you don't get the radiator heat directly on the base I will water them again in a couple of days time I never cover them or anything um, yeah, they're just fine like that as soon as I see uh, seeds breaking the surface they'll go on to a fairly sunny windowsill like this one you can just see some onions just starting to break surface here so yeah they're on the uh, kitchen windowsill and it's very sunny because it doesn't have a roof and you can see this this is pretty good um, we're not too leggy these plants here um, so these have been growing for quite some time now and uh, well they'll get potted on soon but uh, that's okay for warm plants it doesn't get too warm in here um, so uh, yeah that's pretty good as, soon as I see probably 50 to 60 percent germination in a tray like this uh, I know that everything's that's going to germinate is germinated already and they're just not broken through and so in that case I'll move them straight to the polytunnel which is unheated or the little greenhouse which is also unheated unless um, it is going to be a hard frost and then I do try to keep hard frost off things and uh, this is a good example of watering so in this case everything here looks fine apart from I'll give that cell 
uh, a little bit of water and maybe that one a little bit of water so that's kind of how I water basically is when I see things drying out I'll give them a bit of a water and as I say then I'll move on to uh, bottom watering when plants are more like this and so what I'm concerned about is making sure that the whole root ball has plenty of water and uh, and those have been bottom watered today so this is the uh, little propagator doesn't have a thermostat just a little bit of bottom heat just increases the temperature by about 10 degrees um, in here where they are there's not much temperature variability which I think is good um, this is a north facing window so hardly any sun gets in here um, just a little bit in the evening late evening and yeah so it holds at probably 65 70 degrees most of the time and at this time of year anyway and it sounds about 10 so it gets it up 75 80 something like that which is fine for uh, everything pretty much <laughs> um, so the tomatoes the cucumbers the peppers and the like will go on here I don't need that much space um, so three it'll be full in March so that's one of the reasons why I've planted these partly just to test germination of one of the old packets that I used um, and partly uh, just to get them out of the way and pot it on before I need this in March okay so that's it so I guess now you've seen that you know why I don't show videos of how I sow seeds because there's nothing at all fancy about what I do it's just absolutely simple stuff um, and as I always say if you want to see how it's done properly watch Nigel on the Muddy Boots channel see you soon